Hi everybody, in this video, we will try to unveil, from a purely physical aspect, a phenomenon reported in verse 37, Surah Yassin, or chapter 36. The Lord tells us, in this verse, concerning one of his signs, that we appreciate, every day, the benefits, whatever is our religion and whatever is our belief, whether one is a believer or an atheist, we all feel, the pleasant and considerable effects, that has this sign on all aspects of our life on earth, and that, during all our existence. The issue in this video, is about the existence of the day on earth. And no doubt, everyone agree that the existence of day on earth is a physical phenomenon of inestimable value. For maybe some do not know it, the day, or part illuminated by the sun, for other planets, is not like that one of the earth. In other words, the day is under a dark sky, full of stars, unlike the bright and radiant blue of the sky on earth. Here are some photos of the moon, in its illuminated part by the sun, we note that, the day, on the moon, is obscured. On the moon, the light which can be received, can be only what the lunar soil will have reflected. And so, the lunar sky is completely dark, therefore, during the lunar day, the stars are visible. Why that? Why, on the moon, the day is dark? This is due to the fact that the moon has no atmosphere. Thus, the phenomenon of light diffusion is non-existent on the moon, unlike the Earth. Because, according to astrophysicists, due to its relatively low mass, the moon has lost its atmosphere, which is hereby released, and joined the space back to the Earth, and to the bright and radiant blue of its sky during the day. Please note, according to these photos from the International Space Station, that the day is covered by the night. The day is a thin blue layer above the Earth, but it is completely covered by the night. This reality, that we see in these photos of the space station, where the day is covered by the night, is reported in two verses of the Holy Quran. For 1400 years, the verse 54, chapter 7, and the verse 3, chapter 13, relate, emphatically, that the day is covered by the night. And today, the pictures of the International Space Station, testify to the truth of these two verses, and thus confirm what says the Holy Quran since the 7th century. He makes the night cover the day, verse 3, chapter 13. He covers the day with the night that pursues it swiftly, verse 54, chapter 7. This is one of two verses. Surely, your Lord is Allah, who created the heavens and the earth in six days, then he positioned himself, as tower, on the throne. He covers the day with the night that pursues it swiftly, he created, the sun and the moon and the stars, subjugated to his command, lo, to him alone belong the creation and the command. Glorious is Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, the Holy Quran, chapter 7, verse 54. Now let us ask these two questions, why on earth the day is it covered by the night, and why the day is it therefore confined, in this thin layer, of some tens of kilometers thick, above the ground? To answer these two questions, one must know that the day is the result of the phenomenon of light scattering in the gaseous atmosphere covering the earth, in other words, this aspect of day on earth is the result of the interactions of light rays from the sun, with the gas molecules and suspended particles, aerosol, and constituents the Earth atmosphere. The light diffusion is the property of matter, finely divided to disperse the light rays in all directions. This diffusion, or spatial spreading, is done, without loss of energy, so without a change in wavelength of the light ray, that is the Rayleigh's scattering, which explains among other things, why the sky is blue, and Mies scattering, which explains among other things, the appearance of the clouds. 
since the day's brightness is a result of the light diffusion, and its spatial spreading is in the atmosphere, then the day is spatially limited by the atmosphere, so we conclude that the day, confined in the thin layer of the atmosphere, is a thin layer above the Earth. Indeed, the atmosphere does not exceed 100 kilometers above the Earth. It is good to know that 70% of the mass of the atmosphere is in the first 17 kilometers of altitude above the Earth. This layer is called the troposphere, so we notice that the atmosphere around the Earth is a thin layer of 100 kilometers of gas, compared with the 6,400 kilometers of the Earth's radius. Now, let's come back to the famous verse 37, Sura Yassian, or chapter 36, which describes the way in which the daylight is substituted by the darkness of the night. And a sign for them as the night will flay from it the day, and behold they are plunged in darkness. The Quran, chapter 36, verse 37. In Arabic the verb nesluku is used when one flays an animal's skin, thus, according to this verse 37, the day is compared to the skin flayed from the night, like is flayed the skin from the animal's body. But why the expression, we flay the day from the night was then used in this verse? To answer this question, and to appreciate the description reported in this verse, I invite you to contemplate the Earth from afar. For this we use the photos of Russian satellite, Electro-L, geostationary, so orbiting the Earth at 36,000 km altitude. Note the accuracy of the description of the Quran, the day is indeed flayed of the night. The day is well and truly flayed of the night. In contemplating the Earth from far, and looking at the area on Earth where takes place the transition from day to night, then, the description, we flay the day from the night, finds all its meaning. You would agree that this description can only emanate from a spectator who observes the Earth from afar. How then, Muhammad, may the peace of Allah be upon him, who lived on earth, have been able to describe the sunset in this way, that only a spectator who observes the earth from afar might do. To conclude this video, let's ask two questions to those who still do not believe in the divinity of the Quran. How a man 1400 years ago, Muhammad, may the peace of Allah be upon him, would know these truths, unknown in his time, namely, Primo, that the day, is only a thin layer around the earth, for having used the expression in verse 37 chapter 36, flaying the day from the night. Knowing that the word, flaying, used in this verse for the day, illustrates the fact that the day is a thin layer adhered to the immensity of the night, as the thinness of the skin is adhered to the sheep, which one flays.
Secondly, that the day is constantly covered by the night, for having described this truth by, he makes the night cover the day. However in the 7th century, astronomical knowledge, were insignificant, and these extraordinary aspects of the day and the night, unknown even today by the majority of people, are known only in recent decades, owing to scientific and advanced technical means. How the Quran, a text dating back more than 1,400 years, may contain truths that are known only in recent decades, truths confirmed today by the photos of the International Space Station orbiting at 400 km altitude and by the Russian satellite electro -L, orbiting at 36,000 km above the Earth. Thanks for your attention.